Okay, for some reason it didn't just automatically switch. So here we are again, and we were back to Eve in the garden and, you know, being tempted. And um, so the fruit looked good. It didn't look rotten. I mean, it was like, you know, seductive looking. It was like, okay, that looks good. That smells good. It sounds like it would really be the best fruit. You know, why is God not letting us have this fruit? So what does she do? The more she stared at it, the more, I call it, going down into the basement. So she's getting ready to go down into the devil's lair, into the basement. She keeps taking those steps, keeps listening to him, keeps looking at the fruit, keeps lusting, pride, wanting to be as wise as God, starts rising up in her. And um, so what did she do? There it was. She took it. She ate it. And then she gave some to her husband, Adam, who was man, whom God put in charge of the garden. And what did he do? Instead of remembering what his creator said, he ate it. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. So, shame there was sin. They had disobeyed, done the one thing to take them out of holiness. So they were naked and they were separated from God at that point. There was no holy communion. They were unholy. They sinned. And so, you know, here God who had created the angels <laughs> and Lucifer and you know, Lucifer had everything that he needed. So did the other angels. You know, in the name of free will, they rebelled. Then they went down into the earth and seduced mankind who were all cr so created, you know, in God's image. You know, in God's image. Um, now, the angels, I don't think, were in God's image, but they had a, they had a high position serving God. But here was mankind created in God's image. And I'm sure that like irritated Satan even more, you know, because Satan had never been made in God's image. I don't think. Hmm. Might check that out. Uh, sometimes I'm like, okay, am I speaking Bible truth? <laughs> so anyway, check that out. It's a good question. You know, um, well, regardless, what happened is that mankind was now separated from God. You know, mankind was not in holy communion with God. Mankind was not good. You know, mankind at that moment had the nature of Satan and the fallen angels. It was pride and lust. Um, so now they were under a new master. And, you know, it says that they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife, they were man and wife, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. So they're like hiding, hoping God doesn't see them. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Well, and God already knew this, but he was, he was wanting Adam, he, Adam to fess up. The man said, The woman, now he blames, here we go, blame and shame, taking no responsibility saying, well, it's, it's that woman's fault because she ate first. So, you know, he's passing the buck, so to speak, onto the woman. The woman that you gave with me, she, she gave me fruit of the tree and I ate like he didn't have any free will to say no. So it was the woman's fault. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is that you have done? And then the woman, she's like, oh my gosh. My husband just ratted on me. So she 
says, well, it's the serpent deceived me. It was that serpent's fault, and I ate. So, from then on, it, it goes to what God says is going to happen because of this sin, what, uh, what's going to happen to the serpent, and also who is Satan, and also what's going to happen to um, sinful man and woman. Um, oh boy. <laughs> So, the Lord God then said to his son, to, there was Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Behold, the man, man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. So, Spirit, the, you know, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, they knew good and evil. And man didn't initially. But now, man knows that there's good and evil. Now, lest he reach out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever, the Lord God sent him out from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. So, you know, God took him out of the garden, because if they had, in their sin, eaten of the tree of life, they would have lived forever in that sinful nature. So God was being merciful to them at that point. And, you know, they didn't know that God had had a plan for, for restoring sinners who had rebelled against him. Um, whew. Okay, so... How does that relate to spirit breath? Well, man and mankind, man and woman, and everyone who lived after them, every human being that was born of the flesh after them, was going to be separated from God. And they were going to die a physical death. And they were also not going to have spirit breath. They weren't going to have new life in them. So what was the, where's the hope? The hope is that God had a plan to put spirit life back into sinners saved by grace who repent and receive Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as their Savior. And through His blood, they are seen we are seen now as the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, not through any righteousness of our own. You know, there was no way that we could ever become righteous. It was impossible because we had sinned. We were separated from God and we were headed for eternal destruction. Not only a life on earth of pride and lust and strife and deception and evil and sins and all the heinous stuff that goes on this earth <laughs> in the lives of humanity, you know, murder, drugs, alcohol, um, adultery, abortion. I mean, it was all, everyone was doomed. There, there was no hope. But, and the devil really thought that he had won. And by side, it looked like he did. But God wasn't finished. So, God loved that which he created for good and not evil. And God had a plan to bring, give hope to all sinners. And that plan was sending his son, Jesus' son, the son of God, to the earth in flesh to walk among, on this earth, to be to see all the destruction that had happened because of separation from God and and so he walked as man he was tempted he never he never sinned he was perfect man he was he was perfect son of God and perfect son of man um 
you know, he wasn't, even though he was born out of the womb of Mary, it was a, it was a virgin birth. Uh, it was a supernatural birth that God had put his, the seed of his son in Mary. And, you know, he was birthed and his purpose was to live a perfect life as man on earth and then go to the cross as son of man without any sin in him to pay the price for sinners so that all sinners who believed would have eternal life. And that right there is where um, many people miss it. You know, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. So God, God's love. God created the world for good. There was never supposed to be any sin or rebellion or wickedness. So he so loved the world that he gave. I mean, he, he purposely sent his son, Jesus Christ, to earth to be made flesh to go to the cross. He gave his only begotten son. So begotten means he was, you know, he was made from the father's nature. There was no sin in him. He was the son of God. You know, he's, he's God. Jesus was God. <laughs> you know, he was in the flesh. He looked just like us, but he was God because he was the father's son. And so, you know, when he went to the cross, he was the perfect lamb sacrifice. Um, no human could have died because of being separated from God. Jesus, you know, not only paid the debt to save sinners from the Father's wrath, but because he was the perfect man, and when he died, his blood was shed for us so that we could be the perfect righteousness through him, not through any perfection of our own, but through him. Like when, when God sees believers, he sees righteousness through the blood of his son. Um, hmm. That's why this is all supernatural. I mean, I've said I was an unbeliever. All this stuff was like, pfft, to me. But the sauce is in the Word of God and Holy Spirit. You know, only when God wooed me to the cross through the offering and the invitation through a woman who came into my life, at a time when I was suicidal and offered me the free grace of eternal life by faith, that I believed by faith, not by my intellect, not by, I mean, certainly nothing in my life would have, <laughs> I wouldn't have chosen me. I mean, according to the word, I was, you know, had so many sins in me, adultery, you know, debauchery, strife, division, jealousy, coveting, a wicked tongue, defiled body, you know, a gossiper. Um, I was the woman at the well. I'd been married several times. Um, there was nothing good in me. And one might say, well, you weren't a murderer. Well, I murdered people by my tongue. I murdered them in my head. So yes, I, I was. I, I also had an abortion. So yes, I was a murderer. Um, so it was through no righteousness of my own, but by faith, I believed. And I, as you can probably tell, am kind of an intellectual. <laughs> and so, you know, it wasn't my intellect that drew me to the cross. As a matter of fact, intellect would keep me away. I would say, oh, that's ridiculous. You know, that stuff's not real. So it was, it was God had touched my heart through a woman who offered me the gospel and the hope of the cross and the word of God through at a time when I was, again, at the end of my rope in life. Nothing had worked. I'd, I'd done the whole world thing. You know, I, I thought that my security was in worldly things. And that's the seduction. 
It's like I was eating that fruit from the tree of good and evil. You know, oh, be your own God. Oh, do what you want to do. You know, free choice, free will. You don't have to keep that baby. You know, oh, you can sleep with that man. Um, you know, everybody else. It's, it's freedom, free will, free choice. So there were no moral holy standards. And that's the way the flesh works. It, it doesn't operate in holiness. It operates in unholiness and acting like it can be its own God and make its own rules. So, um, 